So how will this work? All right, well, thank, thank you for having me. So we're working together with Microsoft to build next generation supercomputers. And the real goal of, what, of OpenAI and what we're trying to accomplish is to build what we call artificial general intelligence. So trying to build a computer system that is as capable as a human at being able to master a domain of, of, of study and being able to master more fields of study than any one human can. So give me some examples of what this supercomputer might be able to do. Well, so if we succeed, the kind of thing that we want to be able to do is, uh, for example, build a computer system that can uh, solve medicine uh, better than humans can. If you think about how humans solve medicine today, that we do it by increased specialization. Right? You go to one doctor, you know, I have a friend who's going through medical pr procedures right now where he talks to a first doctor who uh, does an ultrasound uh, but can't read it, so he has to go to a different doctor who doesn't really have context as to what's going on. And this is not a problem that we can solve by increasing the amount of knowledge that, that humans have to learn. Right? There's only so much we can fit in our minds. And so what we really need is we need tools that are capable of helping us solve these problems. And that's the kind of thing that we want to apply general intelligence to. Now, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella said the goal is to democratize, democratize AI while always keeping AI safety front and center so everyone can benefit. How do you police the work that you're doing, the work that these supercomputers may, in fact, in the future be able to do? So I think that this is a really important question, especially given today's context and climate. Uh, so the way that we think about this is our goal is to is to distribute the economic benefits of artificial general intelligence. You can imagine that you build a system that can generate huge amounts of value. Like today, the, you know, if you look at the top 10 most valuable companies in the world, seven of them are technology companies. We think whoever builds general intelligence will be the number one by a huge margin. It's really important that those benefits go to everyone rather than being locked up in one place. And there's a second part, which is it's really important that you keep these systems safe and secure and that you build them with ethics in the forefront. Uh, and that's something that both we and Microsoft are very aligned on doing from the beginning. Now, Sam Altman re recently joined OpenAI as, as CEO. He's also been sort of there from the very beginning on yep. the ground level of this project. Uh, Elon Musk is one of the co-founders, but left the board That's last year. So how involved is Elon? Uh, so, so Elon's no longer involved. He had to leave due to a conflict with Tesla. OK. Um, so Elon Musk uh, has talked about AI as something that could, you know, we should fear. Uh, the apocalypse, you know, we should be scared of how much smarter human, computers can become than humans. So how do you sort of balance that fear with the research that you're doing yep. if you're the ones that are moving AI forward? Yeah, I think what it really boils down to is that AI technology is becoming very powerful. Right? And that means that there's both these amazing benefits, these amazing applications. Imagine a personalized tutor that can really understand you that is available for free to every person on the planet. That's the kind of thing we should be able to build with the kind of system that we, that we want to create. But you also have to ask the questions of what are the risks? How can they be misused? Today, we already see AI technology, for example, deep fakes, that already has bad implications in the world. And how do we maximize those benefits, mitigate the downsides. And so that's our goal. Our goal is to push the technology forward, make sure that we're capturing those benefits, making sure everyone benefits from them, but also make sure that we keep it safe and secure to mitigate the downsides. How is that a conflict with Tesla? Uh, so, so Tesla is also working on AI uh, and, mm -hmm. for example, with, with autopilot. So this is an important application area for them. Interesting. So where will AI take us, let's say, in five years? So the timelines here are always really hard to predict, right? You know, like one story I, I really like thinking about is just looking, uh, for example, at, uh, you know, previous technological I innovation. So in 1878, uh, you, you had uh, Thomas Edison announced that he was going to create the incandescent lamp, and gas securities in England fell. So British Parliament put together a commission of distinguished experts who came out to Menlo Park. They checked everything out. They said, this isn't going to work. Uh, and one year later, he shipped. And so I think that, that we're in a similar sort of place here where it's hard to predict what the future will be like mm -hmm. because we're in this, this exponential right now where the computational power that we're using is growing five times faster than Moore's Law. And so what we do know is every year we're going to have unprecedented AI technologies. We've been doing that for seven years. OpenAI has been doing it for three. And so I think that this year we have systems that can understand and generate text. I think five years from now, we should expect that we can have systems that you can really have meaningful conversations with. I think that we should see within a bunch of different domains uh, a lot of, of, of very you know, systems that can work with humans to augment what they can do much further than anything we can imagine today.